a lot of you, this might be very new. And we know that this is a topic that is a bit, um, it's new, basically. It's, well, it's not that new, but it's new to a lot of people because, um, uh, well, you're probably going to talk a little bit about that in the presentation. Mm -hmm. So we are expecting people to have a lot of questions about this and maybe not even agreeing. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to let Lubo introduce herself in just a minute, and then she will do this presentation for us, which will last up to 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Lubo. Yes. It's all yours. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Leave the screen and uh, mute myself, but I'm here if you need me. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Lisbeth, for inviting me here today. And um, I'm very happy to be part of the Nordic Dog Trainer School. Uh, my name is Lubov. I graduated the International Dog Trainers Education with Turi Drugas in 2020. And since then, I've been continuing my education with Amber Batson and so many other experts in the dog world. So it's always, always about learning. And I hope that today with this uh, talk, you will also learn something new for yourself. As, uh, as Elizabeth said, it's a very new topic, um, the seed command. So uh, discussing why dogs sit uh, naturally and why do we still make dogs sit on command. And of course, it was a very new topic to me as well when I did my uh, education with Turi Drugas. In fact, as her students, she asked us to do the seed study. Uh, it meant to observe our own dogs and to know down when and how often they were sitting. And since then, since this education, I've been thinking a lot about that. And in fact, continue to explore this topic through a seed study, which I will present to you today. And I think it's, um, it's really interesting. And uh, I'm, I want to really thank Turit for the inspiration and uh, for the push, let's say, to do this study. And uh, I've seen um, in the recent year or so um, this topic being discussed amongst uh, dog trainers and amongst dog guardians. And I'm very happy to see it, um, it growing, the discussions around this uh, growing and people uh, you know, talking about this. It's very exciting. So without further ado, let's uh, dive in in today's talk, the seed study, why do dogs sit and why do we still make them do it? So I want to begin with my own personal story. On this picture here, you can see my uh, first dog, Vita. We adopted her six years ago from the streets of Bulgaria. She is a street dog. Um, unfortunately, she's not here with us today anymore, but Vita was absolutely incredible at communication. She was my first teacher, uh, though very sadly, I knew very little about about dogs because I never lived with dogs before, before adopting Vita. I grew up with cats actually. So um, I knew very little about uh, organizing a harmonic life with dogs. However, I had a very clear idea in my head and this idea was to teach Vita to sit on command. And so I did. And now, after learning so much more about dogs, after completing my education and working with other dogs, it just amazes me that the idea of teaching dogs to sit is so popular that the person who never lived with a dog before, <laughs> which is me, uh, had it very, very clear. And in fact, many dog guardians worldwide think that sit should be the first command to teach to a puppy or to their new dog. And um, then people ask the dogs to sit before the dog gets food, when they want to, uh, for the dog to wait, when they want to pet the dog, when they want to show how obedient the dog is, and the list can go on and on. It's really infinite reasons why we ask our dogs to sit. And I did so too with Vita. But now, six years later, I really want to ask a few questions. And the first questions that I want to ask is, is it good for dogs? So what about the impact on their bodies? What about impact on their mental health? How does it feel from their perspective? The second question that I want to ask is, why and how often dogs sit naturally? 
So what if we don't ask them to sit? How would they use this behavior? And lastly, is it really useful for us people to ask our dogs to sit? Or maybe we have some alternatives. So this will be the plan for this talk. And let's dive into the first uh, part of the talk. Is it good for dogs? Let's explore the physical and psychological impact of the common seed. Uh, firstly, let's think about the physical impact of sitting and then getting up. Now, I'm not an expert on dog's anatomy, so uh, the information I used here uh, is from the Galen Therapy website, and I invite you to visit this website. They have a lovely article about the sit command with a lot, a lot of details. However, I'll do my best to explain you here. So... Dogs use exclusively their own body to sit and get up. Uh, so we people use handles on the chairs to help us. Uh, dogs don't have this option. They need to use only their body. And in fact, the physical act of sitting involves several large leg muscle groups, the glutes and the back. Then the knee and elbow joints are loaded as well. And then to get up, the dog would need to use the neck muscles too. So what if we think also about the popular commands like look at me and heal, neck muscles need to work very hard for the dog to look up at the guardian's face. When the dog sits down, her body is working hard to support the body and not to crash into a seat. Again, for this, we use handles. Dogs don't have that option. And when the dog is standing up, she has to lift her body. So the body is working against gravity. The muscles have to lift the weight from the sitting position. It's really hard work if we think about it and it should be appreciated. And we also shouldn't forget that dogs often have painful necks because of compensating for some other issues in the body. And two very common places for osteoarthritis are hip joints and the knee joints. If you add this up to the fact that dogs ask to sit repetitively, multiple times a day, it can get quite uncomfortable and painful. In addition to that, the repetitive nature of sitting can be damaging. If you take obedience classes, as an example, where young dogs or even puppies ask to sit tens of times during one session, you'll get the idea of how repetitive this exercise can get. And the repetitiveness of sit becomes problematic because dogs learn to sit and start offering this behavior in many different situations, even if we don't specifically ask them to do it. And so we really think about the ground too. Is it too slippery, too hot, or even too cold to ask our dogs to sit on it? So many things to think about there, isn't it? And a special consideration about puppies. Puppies' growth plates close only after the age of eight months or even over a year. It depends on the breed and on the size of the dog. And as you can see on these x-rays, bones of puppies are not fully grown yet and their joints and ligaments are very, very soft. So it's hard for them to sit and then get up. Asking puppies to sit repetitively might have very negative impact. They are not ready for this kind of repetitive exercise. And any injury or damage to a puppy's body has a lifelong impact. Physical overloading and stresses on the body can promote joint problems, which often manifest as osteoarthritis. And what is osteoarthritis? It's actually a family of over uh, 10, di uh, 100 different conditions that affect the musculoskeletal systems of the body, in particular, the joints. And typically, arthritic conditions tend to affect the cartilage covering of the joints. It results in inflammation and damage to this cartilage covering. So you can take a look at the picture on the slide that demonstrates the damage that arth arthritis can do. So according to K9 Arthritis Management Project, it's the most common cause of chronic pain in dogs. It's estimated that four out of five older dogs are affected by arthritis, but it can develop in young dogs too, even one year of age. 
Many dog guardians don't realize that their dogs are in pain. Dogs will not show obvious signs of pain, such as yelping or limping, until it's really unbearable. But even then, many dogs suffer in silence, unfortunately. So asking a dog that's in pain to sit can be insensitive. Thankfully, we can get better at spotting early signs of pain and discomfort in our dogs, and it can help us to improve their quality of life. The Canine Arthritis Management Project can help you um, to learn more. It's a great source of information, and I invite you to take a look at their website and Facebook page to learn more. So let's further explore the physical impact of SID. Let's look at some uh, pictures that we have on the screen here. Look at how these dogs are sitting down and how their knees uh, are placed. Do you notice anything wrong or anything weird? The way that the golden retriever on the first picture from the left is placing the knees is strange. The knees are widespread. It might be difficult to sit on the sun, so the dog is struggling to place her knees in a normal position here. Maybe there is another reason. But um, if we look at the middle picture, and we, you can see a lot of tension at the lower back of the dog. And on the last picture, you can see a saluki, a side hound. Um, she, she's sitting and her knees are placed in a way um, facing inwards. It's a little bit strange too. And it's generally harder to sit for sight hounds because of their particular body shape. So look at your dog and notice if there are any signs of discomfort like we've just seen on the pictures. If you notice any discomfort, I encourage you to seek advice from a qualified health professional. And now let's think about psychological impact of the common seat. As we said in the beginning, we use this command to ask, to ask our dogs to wait, sit before food, sit in presence of other dogs or people passing by for so many reasons. And from the outside, the dog looks very calm. She's sitting down. But what is happening on the inside? Let's try to look at the situation from the dog's perspective. Sitting down is a vulnerable position. You cannot escape easily or defend yourself in this position. And it's true that sitting down is a calming signal. It means that dogs use sit as communication between themselves sometimes or with other people, but dogs use a wide range of body signals to communicate. They use their whole body. And being asked to sit does not allow them to use these communication signals effectively or calm themselves down to cope better. So dogs are restricted to sitting often in difficult for them situations and doesn't feel safe for them. And even if the dog looks calm from the outside, the tension is building up inside. Eventually many dogs can give up, stop trying to communicate, stop trying to avoid the situation and go into learned helplessness, which is a serious welfare concern for us and for our dogs. It's also very popular to um, ask the dog to sit as a way to teach alternative behavior. For example, if we have a dog that's jumping up on us, uh, sometimes people teach the dog to sit instead. Or it's also used um, to teach sit instead of sniffing, instead of barking, doing other natural behaviors for the dog. But we should consider that each of the behaviors that the dog is showing us is serving a certain function for the dog. So there is always a reason why a dog would do um, anything that she does. So we, if we simply shut down the, these behaviors and ask the dog to sit, we prevent ourselves from asking why my dog is doing this, what I can do to help my dog to cope better. And we prevent ourselves from understanding our dog better, building trust, and really helping the dog. And let's have a closer look at a very common situation, a dog being asked to sit before crossing a road. So from the dog's perspective, 
We see that there is a lot of moving traffic in front of her in very close proximity. There are maybe big buses, cars, motorcycles, bicycles, each vehicle with its own speed and sound, sometimes very loud. Um, there is also probably the sound of the traffic light, a very annoying tickling noise, noise even for me, to be honest, and unfamiliar people are in close proximity to the dog. We also need to take to, into account that this is probably happening repetitively, probably uh, several times a day, every day. And what if the dog already is experiencing some physical discomfort or pain? As you can see, there are many things that are going on at the same time while the dog is forced to sit. Does it feel safe for the dog? I do not think so. And if the situation is repeated often, it will have negative impact on the dog's well-being. Uh, I also want to touch on the topic of teaching shelter dogs to sit. Um, at Bulgaria, it's widely believed that teaching shelter dogs obedience commands, including sit, will increase their chances of being adopted. This uh, notion has been challenged in um, the two studies that I'll uh, present here, and the two summaries of the studies, and here are um, references for them too, if you want to go and um, take a further look. So in 2014, Alexandra Protopopova and her colleagues in the US studied the relationship between dogs' appearance their in-kennel behaviors, and their length of stay in the shelter prior to adoption. They had a group of 289 dogs that lived in a country animal shelter in Florida. They uh, made videos of these dogs for one minute throughout uh, their stay every day. And um, they've been making these videos as one or two visitors um, that behaved either passively, so they didn't interact with the dog, or actively, they interacted with the dog in some way, visited the kennel. Um, and independently of appearance, uh, several behaviors um, were found to be um, significantly correlated to longer shelter stays. So they found that if dogs performed these certain behaviors, they stayed longer in the shelter. They weren't adopted as fast as other dogs. And these behaviors were leaning passively on the kennel wall without interacting with the observer, facing away from the visitor, and frequent movement of shifting back and forth. You can call it also um, stereotypical pacing. We can also recognize that these behaviors are stress signals. They're related to stress and fear. And either sitting or greeting or showing eye contact influenced how long a dog was at the shelter prior to adoption. So these results tell us that kennel behaviors that reflect fear or lack of sociability are more important um, in the dog's likelihood of being adopted than a trained behavior such as sitting down or offering eye contact. Very interesting study. And another study that I want to uh, tell you about was done in 2016, also in the USA, by a graduate student at University in Kansas. They tested potential adopters' willingness to adopt a dog uh, based upon whether or not the dog sat on command. So in this study, they had a group of 79 college students. These students were interacting with um, dogs that they believed were up for adoption. Well, in fact, these were volunteer dogs. They were not in shelter, but it didn't matter because the participants just had to um, interact with the dog um, and they uh, visited with the dog sitting on command or they interacted with the dog naturally with no commands given. So then uh, the, the students, the participants were asked to compile a questionnaire um, and evaluate their interest in adopting the dog. So how, how likely they were to adopt the dog that they visited with. The results of the study showed that um, the person's willingness to adopt the dog that they visited was not influenced whether or not the dog sat on command. 
So similar to Protopopova study, sitting on command was not related to potential adoption success of these dogs. And um, what actually mattered for adoption of their shelter dogs? It's more important question I feel to ask. Um, Alexandra Protopopova then and her colleagues made another study in 2016 to find out what actually mattered for adoption of shelter dogs. They studied 250 out of kennel visits between um, dogs that were up for adoption and potential adopters at the local shelter. After selecting a dog to meet, shelter visitors interacted with dogs in either a small outdoor area, a larger grassy outdoor area, or a small indoor room. And multiple factors were examined during these uh, interactions. So they looked at the dog's appearance, the dog's breed, the dog's age, the behavior, and the environment where these visits happened. And overall, they found that only three factors stood out as significant predictors of an individual's dog likelihood for adoption. So these factors were important. And these were engaging in play. Uh, the dogs who wanted to play with the potential adopters were more likely to be adopted after the interaction than lying close. And the dogs who chose to lay down near the human visitor were much more likely to be adopted than those who didn't lie down near the visitor. And uh, place of the visit was very important too. They found that visits that took place in the small outdoor area were more likely to lead to successful adoptions than uh, those that occurred in a large enclosed grass area in the indoor room. So as you can see, um, trained behaviors, seed command or other trained behaviors are not in this list. And um, now uh, coming to part two and uh, responding to a second question of um, our, our uh, talk today is how dogs of different sizes, age and health conditions choose to sit. So we want to look at the um, way they want, uh, choose to sit without us asking them to. And uh, to really answer this question, I performed a seed study over the last couple of years. Uh, we had um, asked the dog guardians and dog trainers from all over the world to participate. And um, this um, this been happening even before when uh, Turi Drugas um, was uh, working with her students and uh, asked um, her students to observe the dog. So we expanded this a little bit and maybe some of you who are listening um, were involved so I want to thank you for participating so much. We um, asked um, people to, to give to send us the data and in fact we received data on 43 dogs. We had uh, 81 days of observation in total. So um, some of the dogs were observed only for one day but we had 21 dogs that were observed for more than one day. And uh, people were compiling this um, data sheet. They've been putting um, the name, the country, uh, name of the dog, the age of the dog, um, whether or not the dog had any diagnosed mobility issues and some other information. And they've been essentially noting down for which reason and for how long their dog was sitting during one day. So we gave them a list of um, behaviors, a list of reasons why a dog would sit. This included to lie down, to get up, you know, those quick transitional seats between the lying down and getting up, then um, to interact. So that's uh, so-called a learned seat when dog um, were asked to sit or um, learned to sit in the past for something and does it now even without the cue. Um, dogs might also sit because they want to watch something in the distance. So it just releases some pressure from their neck because when sitting and watching something in the distance for a long time, it's just so much simpler for them to keep neck position if they're sitting down instead of standing up. And uh, to scratch themselves, of course, or to lick themselves, to groom. 
And also, if people didn't find the reason on the list, they could put other and explain the reason. And if it was completely unclear, that's okay. They could indicate that. And then later on, we analyze the data. Uh, we already went through the, the categories, but uh, this uh, categories list was given to the participants and they were, of course, uh, they, they were explained um, how to understand the categories. So as well uh, put in paper very clear. And um, that's just a little interesting fact uh, to see what kind of breeds participated in this study. You can see that it's been all over the place and many mixed breeds too. It was very interesting to see. So um, coming to the results of the study, um, I want to ask for your patience because there will be a few charts, I hope not boring for you. Uh, so the results showed us that an average per day dogs sit for about eight minutes and about 12 times a day. That is including when they sit um, on the command or as a learned sit. And um, here is a chart to show um, how many times they sit on average based on the reason, so based on the category. And here we can see that they most commonly sat down because it was a learned sit, and um, then followed by to lie down and so on. But I think the most important uh, finding here is that dogs most commonly sat during the day um, as a learned sit. And to give you an example of a learned sit, here we have lovely Stella, a French bulldog. She sat down because her uh, dad took some food out of the fridge and uh, she was not asked to sit specifically, but because food became a cue for her to sit down, she did. We cannot really say that she chose to sit down on her own. It's a behavior that humans taught her. And she did it because of that. And here on this chart, we can see uh, the number of seconds that dogs spent sitting divided by categories. Uh, in our study, the dogs spent the longest time sitting down to watch something in the distance. On average, uh, 106 seconds a day, which is about one minute and 46 seconds, so about two minutes. And the other seats were much quicker. In fact, the seats to get up and to lie down only took about two seconds on average. So it's very easy to miss them sometimes. And here you can see a lovely Barney. He's sitting down to watch some cats in the distance. Barney is on the cat watch. I also I uh, wanted to take a closer look at the category other because I think it's very interesting. I asked people to choose this category uh, if they couldn't find the reason to see it in the list that was provided, as I said before. So we then analyzed the results and found that um, most common reason in what people considered as other was to wait. And it was like to wait for their food, to wait for their guardian to come back, to wait for the door to open. So of course, uh, some dogs choose to sit to wait on their own, for sure, but uh, it made me wonder if there are some maybe learned seats in there. Um, we, we don't know for sure because, of course, the guardians uh, who, who observed the dogs, but it you know, gave me food for thought. And um, another interesting observation was that um, 11 times um, in our study, dogs used it as a calming signal. So as we said before, to communicate with each other during a play maybe, or with another person, it's very interesting as well. So to give you a little summary of this section, a seed to interact with the learned seed was the most common. So it, uh, it was about 35% of all seeds in a day. And um, 12 dogs would sit 12 times in a day with the learned seed, but only eight times without the learned seed. And seed to watch was the longest in duration. And that category other may contain other seeds. 
uh, here we uh, want to do um, analysis of the natural uh, seeds. I call them natural seeds because it means that dogs were not asked to do it and didn't learn to do it from people. So uh, in the following charts, you'll see only the data on natural seeds, right? Um, and on the first chart here on the left, you can see the average number of times the dogs of different sizes chose to see it. There is really no big difference, but um, there seem to be some difference in duration. So on the right, you can see that large dogs uh, in, in yellow, um, they chose to see it for longer time. Just um, there is not much difference in the number of seeds by size, but bigger dogs seem to see it for more time. And um, here is a section that I find extremely interesting. We can see here the breakdown by different age groups, and it gets um, really, really interesting. As I said, you can see uh, on the left the number of natural seeds by age, and it's decreasing with age. So young dogs see it more times during the day than senior dogs. And the same happens with duration. Um, so younger dogs sit for longer than senior dogs. So senior dogs are in red, you can see, and um, others are in other colors. And another uh, thing that we observed was uh, the dogs with mobility issues. So here on the charts, they are in blue. Dogs with mobility issues chose to sit less often. It's on a number of sisters on the left and for less time. It's on the right. So what does it tell us? We can see that all the dogs and dogs with mobility issues sit for less time, um, less often than younger dogs. It probably feels uncomfortable for them. That's why we see this different, so we shouldn't make them sit on command. And natural and learned seat number decreases with age. That's what we observed when we uh, made a statistical analysis. The natural seats number decreases more than the learned seats number. So what does it mean? Probably means that we still ask them to sit as much as we used to, but they choose to sit less. We should really give them choice and it's okay you know if your dog wants to sit for some reason just it shouldn't be our choice it should be our dog's choice and the last question question number three is is it really useful um, for us people to ask our dogs to sit on command so first i want to ask you why dogs have to sit? Standing is more practical for them. We can just ask dogs to wait a little bit also by using a hand signal. Hand signal is something that you know, it's not a command, it shouldn't be trained. Dogs understand it as natural communication. And um, if you want to ask your dog to wait for a little bit, you can just uh, gently show her a hand like I do here on the picture on the right. In fact, on these pictures, you can see Heidi, a dog that lives with us now. Um, she was taught to sit on command in the shelter where we adopted her from, and she would sit for everything. If she saw something in our hands, she would sit if she saw a new person for so many reasons. Um, I never asked her to sit and we didn't reward this behavior. So she eventually uh, stopped sitting and you know, we never enforced it. But instead we uh, want Heidi to wait. If we want her to wait, we can show her hand signal and she understood it immediately. She understood it very well. And if we come back to our dog in front of the road, we will remember that this doesn't feel safe for the dog. So maybe asking the dog to sit serves our purpose as people, but as a result, we can neg be negatively influence the welfare of our dog. And we are potentially getting other issues related to stress, which can become health or behavioral problems. So how can we improve the situation and avoid negative influence on the welfare of our dog? 
It's very simply, we should stop asking our dog to sit down. <laughs> the dog can wait while standing. We don't need to pull on the leash. We can just calmly stop. We also can use a hand signal. You have seen on the slide before to give a little support to our dog and calmly ask her to wait. Also, while standing with a loose leash, the dog will still feel that there is an option to move away, there is an option to escape. It's not necessarily that she will do it, but having this option, knowing that there is an option to do so, it's, it's definitely, it feels safer. And also there is less physical discomfort, as we discussed. And of course, all other stressors like other cars and people will be still there, but just because it will feel safer, the dog will feel better about it. So we reached the end of uh, my talk and uh, let's uh, draw some conclusions and remember the first three questions that we asked in the beginning and asking uh, dogs to sit is good for them, yes or no? Well, I think we now can see no and why, because we have also seen uh, the impact on their physical health and their psychological health. Then uh, why and how often dogs sit naturally? They choose to do it in different situations, definitely, but not as often as we ask them to, especially older dogs and dogs with mobility issues. And is it really useful? Well, not really, because using a hand signal is much gentler way and clear way to ask our dog to wait if we need to. And after having learned all these things and when we adopted our dog Heidi in June 2019, I never asked her to sit even once. And on the contrary, I tried not to reward her learned sitting from before. And to be honest with you, I never felt I needed to ask her to sit. Never felt the need. We need to rethink our approach to sit. And this approach is probably getting too old. Um, dogs are now part of our family. They are companions. They are not instruments anymore. And we should celebrate that and not follow the approach of a dog as a tool. So I'm sure we don't think about dog as a tool anymore, but why do we treat them as a tool sometimes? And um, to really improve the welfare of our dogs, we should focus on resilience, uh, providing enrichment, socialization, empowering them to cope with the world around them, but not the obedience. And uh, it's most important that dogs are healthy psychologically and physically. Uh, so a healthy and healthy dog is easy, really easy to live with too, right? And obedience is not the way to make our dogs thrive. So I, I want to you know, appreciate dogs for the incredible beings that they are. And I'm sure you do too. So thank you so much for your attention, for listening to me today. Thank you, um, Lubo, for this very nice presentation. I'm also, I want to add, and I, maybe you, you were talking about it as well. You know, we should trust our dogs. Mm. It's about trust, don't you think so? Because yes. why are we asking them to sit all the time? I actually... I've never, and people get very surprised. I'm I'm a so-called dog trainer, mm. but I've never ever trained my dogs to sit. Yeah. Because it's not important to me. Uh, yes. And I trust them to make the best decision um, for them in that situation. This is not, and I'm sure you agree, this is not the same as not um, as not having rules. For example, we have to stop for, for the red light and we have to wait until we cross the road. But it's yeah. really, it doesn't matter if the dog is sitting or standing or lay, whatever, standing or sit on his hands, like I usually say. <laughs> yes. So what do you think? What made you interested uh, in this topic in the first place? Mm. Yeah, I think because um, I was also such a believer in a seed command in the, before, and I didn't even know why, you know, because everyone did it. And it really, mm, 
it really maybe shocked me and really opened a different perspective. And as you say that uh, at first I was also very, very surprised and wondered about the rules, but then you realize that it's not about um, the commands, you know, it's about arranging the situation in a way that um, it feels safe for the dog. And of course, there are some uh, borders that you have to put um, for, for their own safety, but it doesn't have to be so rigid, you know, it doesn't have to be the sit or the, the, the lie down there, are, you know, you can uh, help your dog and uh, feel uh, safer, feel um, to have safe choices, to feel ready to, you know, cope with the world on her own without controlling her all the time, because they are very intelligent creatures. If they are given the opportunity, they will make good choices very often. So um, sit is a way to, you know, not asking them to sit and giving them a little more choice or maybe like how, how you want to wait while I'm preparing this toy for you. So often um, I'm asking Aiti to wait while I'm preparing a toy with food for her and she can lie down, she can stand up. This is a choice too. It's, yeah. you know, she can do what she wants. So I agree with you for sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, how long it took for Heidi to stop offering sits? Was it a very mm -hmm. long time? Yeah, it was. It was um, several months, that is for sure. And um, yeah, it, it took just us being very consistent and not rewarding this by looking at her or talking to her, by arranging the situation also in the way that she didn't have to uh, sit down. Let's say if we met another person she would always see it but then you know we would ask the person to call her to maybe uh, to walk with her a little bit instead of having her to sit in front of the person so it was um it was a little bit of work we had to think how to make it happen and yeah it, it took a few months for sure okay yeah Is laying down as bad as sitting well, uh, ask, I think as any command, you know, if we think about any command, which uh, like look at me or heal, there will be, again, physical impact. And I think that impact on their psychological health, what I described here can be, um, you know, is the same for other commands too. Like we restrict the dog to a certain situation and we need to think how does it feel from the dog's perspective? So um, I think if they want to lie down, that's totally fine. You know, I had a beta would lie down in the metro train, which, you know, <laughs> you won't <laughs> expect a dog to do what she did. And uh, I think it's about giving them choice. So I don't use personally any commands with, with a dog. So I think, um, just think about it. How would your dog feel in different situations? Try to think from perspective of a dog. And that is the thing. That's what we want, isn't it? We're not telling people what they should do and shouldn't do, but it's just simple things like this. We don't really think about them too much, mm -hmm. maybe. So we want you to start thinking and to seeing things from the dog's perspective. Yes. Uh, and good question. Yeah. I'm sorry. And it really is not about, as Lisbeth said, not about uh, just uh, letting the dog loose. And um, No, but it helps to really create more harmony, more trust between you, understand what your dog likes and dislikes and how you can really help your dog. And it's, yeah, I feel like it improves things on much deeper level than just containing the dog in a certain position. It's, it's much, it's much more. Yeah. The dog is used to sit in all life situations. He has a long back and this is obviously not comfortable for him. How mm -hmm. to help him not sit per permanently in a hope for reward? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it is uh, difficult to uh, answer without knowing your dog. Um, as uh, I've uh, given an example of my own dog, we had to think outside the box and think how I can change the situation for her because, again, I cannot just ignore my dog if she's sitting down because she 
She wants to interact with me. She, I cannot uh, shut her down and ignore her. It will not feel good for her. So how can I change the situation that she feels good but doesn't sit down? So sometimes um, I will tell you about my dog, but of course it's different for everyone else. But sometimes I do would, um, you know, look at me and I, and I have something tasty in my hand and I know that she'll sit down. So I'll just give it to her before she sits down. <laughs> And it worked. And um, then, uh, as I said, with people, we had to arrange different um, different types of situation for her when meeting other people. So it's different for every single dog. You just need to think a little bit outside the box how to meet the need of the dog and at the same time not to reward the sitting. Mm -hmm. And also sometimes just walking away. My, my mm -hmm. Wilma, the Basset, she has a long back as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she, she, she would sit down and wait for something in the kitchen. I'm not thinking mm -hmm. about sit because it doesn't seem like a problem to her at the moment. But mm -hmm. um, to make her stop sitting there to wait for something, I'm just leaving the kitchen. Mm -hmm. and then they will, you know, do something else. Yeah. 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 I, I would be fine. I had to be very careful because she was just after the shelter. The stress level was very high. So we had to keep be very careful not to cause any frustration in her. Yeah. Yes. It was an adventure for sure. <laughs> um, it showed some pictures of discomfort. Can you explain how it looks like if the dog is sitting comfortable? Mm hmm. You would you would just see a loose, uh, relaxed body. Maybe I can show the last picture that I have here. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you see um, Mandy. She's sitting here, and her back is not very tense. So her neck is okay too. So um, her paws are sort of straight. They're not, you know, with with knees. Uh, spread, wide spread or with knees inside so just look at the whole body how the back is how the legs are and um, just some obvious things that you know we, we've seen on the pictures but again maybe I'm not an expert here and um, going to Galen uh, website you'll find more information that's what I can tell you from you know very basic things general um, obedience training where you tell the dog what to do or lure the dog to do something this is not mental activities mm. because we need to use our brains like for humans it's crosswords or well now I'm very old <laughs> crosswords but you know some other stimulation that makes us think so just being curious for dogs taking it to an enriched environment and so mm. on um, Okay, what was the numbers again? You know, the, um, the number of sits that we asked them, was it 48 times or something? Um, I don't tell you. <laughs> because it was uh, my brain doesn't different work from this. what they were, when they were doing it by themselves, by choice. Mm -hmm. Yes, so 35% of what they, they sat down in the day was learn sit and to be honest um we don't know exactly the, the exact number again because in the other category well what they said dogs were waiting for something i expect that there is some learn seats too so i think the number is even higher but what we have seen is 35 percent of all seats in the day and these were people um you know from pdt a lot of them and from the students of pdt clients so these people more or less already um, knew some of it about SID and uh, you can imagine that, you know, they, these people probably didn't ask the dogs to sit so much, but if we go and observe some uh, classic obedience trainings and with puppy classes, the classic ones, we probably could see that the dog is asked to sit uh, tens of times during one session. So um this like we we said in the beginning this is all quite new of and course and i was too because i was upset when i learned about this too because you suddenly feel that you're doing something wrong but i think it's part of growing it's part of learning we all are 
changing our ways so it's it's okay you know we learn all the time exactly and that's the whole point of this mm -hmm. that we sh and we should we should watch it or looking at your dog for many dogs it's even at least as good as getting a treat you know getting oh, attention yes. in general getting attention is a big big reward for most dogs Oh, yeah. And that's just a glimpse, you know, just looking very quickly. I had a dog like that. I couldn't really look at her at all before she came over to me to, to get oh, attention. Yes. Yeah. I have, I have an idea and she's sleeping here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's like that too. She, uh, she catches your eye very quickly and she knows, like, she, she knows how to do it. She does it on purpose sometimes. It's yeah. hilarious, but it's very, you have to be so careful about what you are rewarding. <laughs> You have to be well, two, two steps ahead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Oh, well, thank you very much, Lubo. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye. Bye.